In New York, the dramatic parade of major world figures across the stage of history continues. Cuba's Fidel Castro boards a Soviet airliner to return to Havana, a little horse from his non-stop four-hour marathon speech before the General Assembly. Local police, eased by the departure of New York's most troublesome transient in quite a while, have two new VIPs to guard. President Sukarno of Indonesia arrives to address the General Assembly and to meet with other foreign leaders. Sukarno stands as a neutralist between the Soviet and the free world bloc. Shortly afterwards, King Hussein of Jordan arrives, already on record in complete disagreement with Khrushchev's plan to reorganize the UN. While here, Hussein will meet with other notables, but not Nasser of Egypt, with whom relations verge on outright hostility. At the United Nations next day, one of the most distinguished diplomatic audiences in all history is Britain's Prime Minister Harold Macmillan, Defense Secretary General Hammarskjöld's Congo policies, only to be met with an astonishing outburst by Khrushchev. Three times the Soviet leader went into tantrums during Macmillan's speech, unprecedented breaches of etiquette that literally shocked most of the delegates present. Macmillan went on to urge progress towards disarmament, his sober presentation in telling contrast to the boorish outbursts of Khrushchev left the General Assembly aghast. At the White House, a glittering state dinner with the President and First Lady playing hosts to Prince Akihito of Japan and his Princess Michiko. The heir to the Japanese throne and his commoner wife are spending three days in the capital in the course of their state visit to this country in connection with the centennial of Japanese-American relations. For this occasion, Princess Michiko substitutes for the traditional Japanese kimono, a Western evening dress. Meet Gene Tingley, who may be an artist or an inventor or a philosopher, depending on how you look at his masterpieces. They are a sort of abstract industrialism, weird and wonderful machines that work superbly but serve absolutely no useful purpose. Their only function is to have no function. forecast by Lama, a group that represents the entire ladies' leather apparel industry. The dinner deluxe costume is this kidskin waistcoat with matching skirt and bright printed blouse. This fox-tiered evening jacket is worn like a cape over a slim rose-patterned evening gown. Giant muff shoes and violet kidskin fingertip length coat with a vivid printed lining, ideal for travel or ski lodge. Any gal can execute a brilliant slalom on this two-piece golden suede outfit. It's reversible to a snowflake patterned wool. On a worldly traveler, this pearlized black cabretta featuring a giant yoke of silver fox. Ideal for resort going, a crisp blue jacket with white saddle stitching and complementing blouse and a skirt of white silk. Bringing up the fashion parade in high style, a swagger trench coat of white capretta piped in red, very much in the Dietrich tradition. Pro football in San Francisco, the New York Giants against the 49ers, whose Y.A. Tittle sparks the first period. From way back, he tosses a screen pass to Hugh McElhenney, and the big halfback picks up 29 yards. San Francisco already leads by one TD. the ball in the 29 and no receiver in sight so he takes off around left end on a terrific run he's headed for pay dirt but the desperate giants stop him on the one 
Joe Perry slices over to score on the next play. And San Francisco 14, New York nothing. But the Giants never say die. Connerly rockets a pass to Kyle Root, and the 49ers' lead is cut in half. In the second half, Mel Triplett blasts up the center for 26 yards. Back George Shaw passes. There's interference call, and the Giants are on the one. Mel Triplett barrels over, and the score is tied. In the last eight minutes, New York trails by one field goal. Shaw drops back, launches a long pass, a brilliant catch by Bob Sims, and he's off downfield for 60 yards. takes in the air again. Triplett receives and rams over the line and the Giants win 21 to 19. 